Hello everyone, this is Doug Nelson with Precision Neuromuscular Therapy, and I want to lead you through a little anatomy review for PNMT for the low back and thoracic spine. And again, thank you so much for registering for this course. I think you're going to find it enormously valuable. And, and again, stuff that you'll be able to use immediately in your clinic, and that is what it's all about. Um, the first thing that we're going to deal with in the seminar in terms of the hands-on will be looking at the SI joint itself. So again, focus on, on just the anatomy, this, the connection between the anominate and the sacrum. And remember that in the picture, what you see is the posterior SI joint, but also there is an anterior SI joint in the front. Uh, they each have different symptoms, they have different reasons for the same uh, kind of symptoms. So we'll look at uh, both hypo and hypermobility in the SI joint itself. Also, we're going to spend some really interesting, uh, uh, do some really interesting things with the thoracolumbar fascia. There is so much really interesting research now about the role of this particular tissue that was never understood even five years ago. And that also changes the way that we will approach that tissue. So um, just familiarize yourself with the anatomy and the muscles that attach to it. Uh, also, if you have resources, um, things, books that you, you know, like, um, in terms of understanding the discal anatomy as well. So this is the nucleus pulposus here, and these are the annulus fibers that surround it. Um, very interesting in terms of how that translates for us in the clinic, especially when you think about things like, so here are the annulus fibers. Each of them, I, be, I believe it's about a 55 degree angle, traveling in opposite directions and how that's protective for the, um, for the nucleus, and then also what happens to those annulus fibers when, um, when there are uh, uh, cracks uh, and, uh, and it's no longer protective for the nucleus. And there are several variations on this, all of which we'll go over in the seminar. In terms of muscular issues, uh, make sure you review the erector spinae. We're going to focus on the longissimus and the iliocostalis section, probably a little more emphasis on the iliocostalis because that's where most of the symptoms tend to lie. And also the same with multifidi, very, very, very important muscle in the low back, much less important in the thoracic spine, but in the low back, like at the level of the PSIS, that muscle is over an inch thick. I've done that dissection and it's remarkable um, how thick and strong that multifidi is. It's also remarkable the kind of symptoms that will present when that muscle has some sort of dysfunction, whether it is hypo or hypertonic. Uh, of course, we'll spend time with the uh, QL and focus on the three fiber directions of the QL, both the iliovertebral, costovertebral, and iliocostal fibers and what defines each one of them and how you can isolate them. That's even more important. This is a very important muscle, but not all of it is important and for the same reason. So we'll help you drill down inside of that. And I think you're gonna find it really fascinating. The iliolumbar ligament, which is right here, this is the connection between L5 and the anominate and stabilizes any anterior motion of L5 uh, on the sacrum. So, and there are lots of times, you know, in, in, for instance, imagine in a car accident where you have the shoulder strap and you have the seat belt. The shoulder strap is keeping your thoracic spine, spine in place. The seat belt is keeping your pelvis in place, but your lumbar spine is um, free to move about the cabin. And that's not a good thing. And that can often create uh, insult to the iliolumbar ligament, which will present a whole set of symptoms that follow. So um, if you can take a peek at that and understand that what we can access in posteriorly is only probably 30% of this ligament, which is much more substantial in the anterior section, which we can't get to. So also in the back and the ribs uh, is the serratus posterior inferior, which is functionally a twin to the internal oblique muscle. And of course, the, the psoas and the iliacus, in many ways, there is no such thing as a 
iliopsoas because the functions are different in these muscles. Um, you have an iliacus, which is a mover of the pelvis on the femur, and then you have the psoas, which is a mover of the femur on the pelvis. So functionally, they're actually quite different, and their nerve entrapment capacity is also quite different. So we'll, we'll address them separately, so study them separately. And of course, here are the obliques. This is the external oblique, which is a contralateral rotator. This is the internal oblique, which is an ipsilateral rotator. So for instance, in this external, this is the left external, it will rotate the person to the right, but it will limit your capacity to uh, rotate to the left. Speaking of rotation, here are the rotatories. This is the rotatory brevis and the rotatory longus. And uh, you were going to have a very uh, personal relationship with those muscles when we get through with the thoracic range of motion section. They're remarkable. And, uh, and partly what's remarkable about them is the rotatories don't rotate the spine. And we'll get to that at the seminar. I think you'll find it really interesting what their role is and how similar that is to, strangely enough, the uh, rectus capitis posterior minor. What? Really? So, and the levator castorum or levator castorum, depending um, on who's spelling it, actually. Um, the, uh, this is the, the brevis and this is the longus. These muscles uh, work with very intrinsic movements of the ribs, primarily during respiration, but they are also ancillary muscles in rotation. And that's where the trouble begins. So review those muscles. Um, I'm excited for you to take the seminar. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to be challenged by it. And I know that you will apply this in the clinic and make a difference in the lives of the people who grace your treatment table. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching.